Hello, my friends, and welcome back to Sylvie Moon Studio. Today, I'm painting in my grimoire again. It's uh, back, getting back to that 52-week project that I promised. I show up every week with a painting and a video. And today, I am celebrating the upcoming first Sabbath of the year. On February 2nd, we celebrate the Sabbath of Imbolc, also known as Midwinter or Candlemas, depending on your belief systems. And um, also Groundhog Day. <laughs> so we're going to talk a little bit about Imbolc, um, its symbolism, its meaning, its importance in this time of the year, and um, a little bit about my painting process. But uh, let's enjoy the painting a little bit. Let's get started. So I start every painting with a nice um, gessoed background so that all the paint um, colors will pop and um, it also gives a bit more light to the painting as well. Um, I really love using the brown paper background, um, but in this case I feel like what I envisioned for this particular painting and for the previous paintings, they needed that color pop. Also. Gesso makes everything, uh, when you paint, makes everything smoother and easier to lay down. So I really like making sure that I have a good gessoed background to start with. I then go in with a pencil sketch of my general idea of how I want this painting to be laid out. And um, now I'm going in with some nice flat planes of color to create um, the basic background and shapes that I'm working with. Um, as you can see, I'm working on a lotus flower right now, which has a lot of deep meaning. Um, it's an Eastern symbol. Um, and being someone who has been practicing yoga for many years, um, the lotus be has become something of a symbol that's very important to me. So I'll talk a little bit more about that. And um, I'm going into painting the amethyst right now. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. But let's just enjoy the painting for a moment. So um, all of these nature clips that you see here are of the river uh, and on the banks of the river, Merced River in Yosemite National Park. And these in particular are from Wawona. We went to visit this last weekend and I wanted to take some clips because I felt that um, the area was a really good representation of what in bulk is all about, which is the spring sh coming through, showing through. So you can see there's snow, but you can see it's melting now. The river's moving a little more quickly. Green is beginning to show. The light is brighter. And that's what in bulk is all about, the midwinter um, celebration. In Northern Europe, in the past and even currently, they still celebrate this um, um, they still celebrate this time of year because, you know, it's colder there. We, you know, where I live, it looks like spring already. Um, but where, uh, where, you, where these celebrations um, originate, it's still very cold and very snowy. And um, it was important for the people of the time and even now to just remind themselves, hey, spring's coming. It's going to warm up. Things will be better. Life will return. So they do things like fire celebrations, bonfires, fire um, festivals, and also um, lots of food, lots of food festivals, just to help give everybody a little hope, give everybody a little something to enjoy 
as you know this sort of the doldrums of winter take over And the reason I decided to paint a lotus flower is because I feel like the lotus flower represents um, what in bulk is. It's all about hope. It's all about transcendence. Um, lotus flower starts at the bottom of a really muddy pond and, um, you know, where the best nutrients lie, but it's very muddy and gross and dark. And it starts as a little seed, a little pod at the bottom. And as it grows, it stays in its pod protected. And the stem kind of rises up slowly, slowly, slowly up to the surface of the water. And when it reaches its surface, it opens up completely pristine, even though it's been sitting in this mud for, and in this murky pond for many, many days, many weeks. And so it's all about how even if we are in the darkness, even in the darkness and from the darkness comes something um, beautiful, something bright, something living. And you can use that as a metaphor for in bulk as well because in bulk is all about how, yes, we're in the dark, you know, winter is a darker season, but light will return and there's some hope there. The amethyst is also a symbol of hope. It's a symbol of transcendence as well, of transformation. And um, it is definitely a crystal that a lot of people look to during this Sabbath to celebrate with and to use on your altar, um, to keep around with you. It's just a great, all around beautiful crystal. Um, it symbolizes very positive things. working on the lotus flower to help it pop and I will be working on that moon above the lotus as well the moon that's emerging from the lotus and uh, just working on the three main objects in the foreground to make them really pop and then as we go I will start to work a little bit on the background but uh, it's been really fun to learn how to um, you know, make these objects have a little bit more light, a little more dimension and interest, give them texture, give them, give them some variation of color. And you'll see what I do with the moon and how I make that moon really pop as well. So the celebration of Imbolc also has a goddess that represents that particular Sabbath. Her name is um, Breed, and she is the fire goddess, the goddess of spring and fertility. And um, she, along with the winter crone, uh, Kalik, um, bring, uh, they take care of winter. And at a certain point, they have a standoff and... What happens is Kalik uh, walks through the forest and if that day that she's walking is sunny, it means that um, there will be more winter. It's a teaser for more winter. If it's a dark and gloomy day when she comes out, uh, spring is on its way. And it's funny because that's similar to Groundhog Day. Groundhog's Day, where if the groundhog emerges from his burrow and he sees a shadow due to sunshine, that means more winter. But if he doesn't see a shadow, then that means it's a cloudy day and there will be an early spring. So this year I'm celebrating in bulk by, um, I'm doing some spring cleaning. I'm going to go ahead and start now because it's already warm where I live and it's a great time to begin to spruce up the house. But if it's still 
a little too cold to do um, a lot of the, that kind of work, then just planning it. Plan out your spring garden. You know, decide what you want to put into that garden this year. Uh, go out when you can and observe nature. Observe the changes happening around you. Make a write a poem or take some photos. Um, bring in some of the nature into your home. Maybe find some flowers or some green greenery, things like that. And uh, or observe wildlife and and watch and see what what are birds doing at this time of year. What are the little mammals doing in your backyard? Are there squirrels back there? Are they busy? Are they digging in the ground looking for what they had hidden over the winter for their winter stores? Are they kind of emerging with great energy and vigor? You know, um, there's a lot of different things and way that you can do in ways that you can celebrate in bulk. You can also bring in candles into your home Um just bringing in the light and bringing in the hope and coming spring um, is a great way to celebrate this Sabbath. The last thing that I do is I come in with a Posca pen or a very um, thin paintbrush and begin to add a few details. So I really wanted to give this a, still a wintry background, but showing that that's in the background and in the foreground is this coming spring. Now I'm just adding some more bright color to the grasses um, on the background and representing how spring is being spring or the, the grasses are springing forth directly from this light source, this crystal on the ground and how it's affecting um, its environment and kind of the bringer of spring here. And um, then I'm adding this little uh, outline using another Posca pen, just a real simple outline. I just wanted to give the edges a little finished feel on this painting. As we near the end of this painting, I just wanted to say thank you so much for being here, for listening to my musings, to my um, thoughts and feelings about this beautiful time of the year, and um, watching me paint. I really appreciate you being here for me, and um, this is a really fun project. I'm going to be doing this for the rest of the year, for the rest of 2022, committed to being here once a week and committed to painting in my grimoire at least once a week. I may be adding more paintings um, throughout the year, so um, that is a possibility, but um, at, at, at the minimum, I will be here once a week with a new painting in the grimoire talking about the Sabbaths, honoring them through the paintings, um, talking about the different astrological seasons and the full moon and the moon cycles and some of those things that are really important to me in my spiritual journey right now.
So I just wanted to say um, thanks so much for being here. I hope you enjoyed the painting. I hope to see you next week. Um, I hope you subscribe and help me to reach a wider audience with this work. I feel like I really want to speak to the art community a little more closely, become a part of it here on YouTube. And it's through your help that I can get there. So that's my hope. And I would promise to keep showing up and sharing my artwork and my thoughts and research with you. Thanks so much for being here. See you all next week.